Hello everyone, this is Professor Reimer. This video is a reteach of our Unit 2 DOL 6 assignment on Classical China. Our objective, remember, was to explain the major effects of the development of the classical civilization of China by responding to a prompt. It's the sixth, no, the fifth time that we have answered this exact same question. Remember, it is down here. What were the major effects and lasting influences of classical China? All this unit we've been working on writing a thesis statement. So I wanted to go back to our world history writing rubric and refresh the categories or the criteria of what a thesis must have. Because on the next writing assignment, you're going to have to write a thesis statement. So they it needs to respond to the prompt. You got to answer the question with a historically defensible thesis slash claim. Now, by historically defensible, it means it needs to be an opinion and it needs to be um, specific to the question. It can't be too broad. And I'll show you some examples in just a minute. Uh, that establishes a line of reasoning. It must have a roadmap. It must have main points that tell the reader where you are going in the essay, but it has to be a it has to be historically defensible. Now, to earn this point, the thesis must make a claim that responds to the prompt rather than restating or rephrasing the prompt. For example, with our prompt, what were the major effects and lasting influences of classical China? If a student said classical China had major effects and lasting influences, that's not going to count as a thesis because you're just restating or rephrasing rather than responding. Finally, the thesis must consist of one or more sentences located in one place, either in the introduction or the conclusion. I prefer it to be in both, but to start, we are going to have it in the introduction. So let's jump into our samples, beginning with beginners. These are students who are in this um, beginning understanding category. The idea is not an answer to the question, or it's incorrect, or it's too general, or too vague. These students are not yet to the passing level. For example, some of the major effects and lasting influences would be in the first paragraph in the Kushan Empire. It said, the Kushans established a kingdom that overspread and dominated North India for the next two centuries, making the rest of India fight for control. The question is on classical China's effects, not about the Kushan Empire, not about Northern India. Way off topic. Paragraph 2 lets me know that there's a route for making trades in exchange between Roman Empire and China. The Kushans developed a calendar based on sun and moon. Their calendar is the calendar that India uses today. So I think maybe the student was, was responding to DOL-5's question on India and put it in the wrong spot, maybe. But either way, you know, it's just a beginning understanding. Now, the second example said, the major effects and lasting influences of classical China, a great way to start, where the Greek alphabet reached Bactria. That's not about China. Kushans adopted to the language, not about China. And Kushans practice Hinduism, Buddhism, and Zoroastrianism from Persia. Again, if you were at, if I had asked you about Kushan influence, this might have been great, but I'm not. I'm asking you about the classical China, just classical Chinese influences. Answer the question. All right, two emerging understandings. This student wrote, the major effects and lasting influences of classical China were many inventions. Excellent. Many of, which, may, many of which their way to Europe and drastically changed the rest of the world. That been, that, that's great. That's fantastic. But the student goes on. Some of the most important inventions of ancient China were paper, printing press, silk, the compass, and the water clock. So that kind of detail, that's actually evidence that doesn't belong in a thesis statement and belongs in a body paragraph. For that reason and for the reason the student only gave me one main idea, I'm, it was only an emerging. The next sam uh, sample, the major effects and lasting influences of classical China were Confucianism. Yes, not bad. Yes, not detailed, but it's accurate. Philosophy and ethical. Mm, those last two statements, really vague. So one great point, emerging. Number three, the major effects and lasting influences of classical China were governance, economic, and social. Again, if you're just giving the themes as your major, um, as your main points, it's not historically defensible. Now, I count it as emerging because that sentence on governance, that was a major um, uh, influence of classical China, but the student really need to explain it uh, in, in, in more detail, such as these examples. The major effects 
uh, and lasting influences classical China were painting, okay, gunpowder, slightly outside the time period, and the compass. All right, this is almost an example of too narrow, but because there were two main points, uh, I accounted as proficient, but just barely. The major effects and lasting influences of classical China were cultural development and interactions. Go, okay, where are you going? Because they wanted to restore peace, order with Confucianism and governance. Ah, that is a um, historically defensible. Now this extra bit, not really necessary, but I kind of liked it because it was always ruled by a rich family and whenever that family goes broke, another family takes over like a TV remote. So that kind of explanation, that again also belongs in a body paragraph not in an introduction or with a thesis. Number three, the major effects and lasting influences of classical China were paper making, printing, gunpowder, and the compass. The four great inventions of ancient China are significant contributions to the Chinese nation to world civilization. This is actually one main point spread out over four different um, ideas or, or different inventions. The, I mean, what is the student arguing? That there were great inventions. That's really just one main point but i counted as um proficient because there were the four spaced out but i'll show you an example how you can do this better in just a second number four the major effects are the emperor left behind a remar remar remarkable artistic legacy too great point not great grammar but great point and another sign of a classical civilization and confucius traveled around china and attempt to spread his ideas to persuade political leaders to follow. This is more of that specificity that's just right, giving some verbs and some nouns and some adjectives that make your thesis defensible. Now, here's our advanced example. The major effects and lasting influences of classical China were the system of Confucian ideas that became popular during the period. Lovely. The legalist belief that a strong ruler was required to create an orderly society, great specificity, and their technological achievements. Remember, in a thesis, you have to give space and leave room for your body of paragraphs. You, you can't write it all in the in the thesis. You shouldn't, right? The bulk of your um, of your writing should come in body of paragraphs. All right, let's move to now how I revised some of these samples, so you can see how to make your thesis statements better. So I took these two from the advanced understanding and I combined them and revised them to say this. The major effects and lasting influences of classical China were great inventions made during the period, the remarkable artistic legacy of the era, and the adoption of Confucius' social and political ideas. Here's where I'm looking. This is what I'm looking for. We got adjectives, adjectives, we got verbs. Um, it's specific, but not. there's no key terms lingering in there. Um, you're saving that specificity for your body paragraphs. This is, um, this is what I'm looking for. All right. In my last example here, I took the three emerging and revised and edited uh, them as well to say this. The major effects and lasting influences of classical China were there many inventions. That was a major influence, yes. The creation and adoption of philosophical and ethical systems. So here's an example. Okay, the, you, you read about the three systems, legalism, Taoism, and Confucianism, right? And those um, isms are, are, have influenced China ever since. So how do you put that into a thesis statement? You need, a, you need an umbrella phrase that describes all three, philosophical and ethical systems. You could have also said maybe, um, belief systems, right? And then in a body paragraph, you can say more details about Confucianism, Taoism, and uh, legalism. All right, and lastly, a distinct governing style. Okay, notice also the themes are here. There are many inventions. That's a part of the T, technology and innovation. Philosophical and ethical systems, that's a part of C, that's a part of their culture. You could also be a part of their social um, development and, and organization and a distinct governing style. That is a part of governance, but specifically focusing on how they govern, their governing style. So that's the kind of specificity um, you need to be moving towards in your, uh, in your thesis statements. You're gonna be writing them uh, all year, but, um, but next in your unit two 
uh, writing assignment, which is coming up soon. I'll see you next time.